Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a follow up video, part two of my exploration of the exterior form of the MacBook Air M1. The first version, which I'll put a, li a link in the description in this, I just explored building the main form in the sort of pinched corners, the pillow top surface and underside. And then after that, I produced a few videos, or actually three, on the Apple corner. The first one was the uh, figuring out this clothoidal transition which ended up following being followed up which was then followed up by uh, variations on that like whether the corner was one piece three piece one spline an arc in the middle etc and then a final video on whether the uh, clothoidal uh, transition would approximation would work with a uh, with a pill form after doing that I decided I probably need to integrate this corner into the uh, MacBook model. So this video is going to just quickly cover where I got to with that. Okay, so you can see here I've got the form. I have added some other details. I started working on the feet and the underside fasteners and also on the, uh, the keyboard details. I'm not going to go into detail on that in this video. We'll just we'll just stick to the corner because there's enough to cover here anyway so as you can see there these corners have got three pieces one two three one two three so in my second video on the apple corner uh there was a version called uh three piece with an arc with a g3 transition which approximated the clothoidal transition so this is the one i've used three piece g3 with relief which happens to be the one here in the image. Okay, so you can see the curvature there. There's an arc, arc section in the middle connected with a, a G3 blend on each end. Right, I'm going to roll back and just explain what what I did to do this uh, and, and anything extra I had to do to control this uh, top surface. Okay, the setup is pretty much the same as in the first MacBook video. Uh, so I'm not going to go into detail about setting out the the main forms blocking out the main volume okay so each corner has construction which if you watch the other videos on the apple corner will explain all of this with the ratios uh, and then a relief of 1.5 or actually 0.75 millimeters on each end for the spline so there's a construction sketch and then there's the the actual corner geometry so that's got an arc in the middle there 45 degrees arc and then it's got the the degree 7 spline on each end doing the blend from zero curvature so I've repeated that three times on the front I've had to do it twice because this side wall is vertical whereas this front wall here is on an angle so I've decided to do that twice and then on the rear um, because both faces are vertical, uh, that's just a single section that gets uh, extruded up. So the front corner to build that, that is a boundary surface. And then I've trimmed and knitted that into the form. In the boundary surface, I did of course have the option to go merge tangent faces. Which means we'd end up with a single uh, surface through there. But I decided I wanted to keep it as separate pieces because I wanted to compare a few things uh, outside of SolidWorks to have a look at the surfaces and uh, the results. And then around the back, that's an extrude which is then trimmed uh, into the shape. So if we have a look at our zebra stripes here, it is a smooth corner, just like in that um, in the other videos where I ex explored the corners. If we just drop the shape quickly into Rhino and have a look and have a look at what the surfaces are that it's output okay so with zebras it's pretty looks pretty good if we turn that off and then we interrogate these surfaces so with SolidWorks if you're ex, uh, extruding like a degree 7 single span uh, curve uh, actually respects that so at the back here we've got a degree 7 surface in one direction and then degree 1 in the second direction and then in the middle we have our, our arc here which is called a surface of revolution which is correct 
So we're going to look around at the front here because I had to use a boundary surface. Uh, boundary surfaces tend to pretty much reduce everything to a degree three multi-span surface. So you can see there the surface that was at the back, which was a nice clean single span surface, is, uh, is now if we type in what, that is a degree three surface in the U direction, which is this way. So that means we've got a whole lot of points in there. And also means if we turn our curvature graph on and have a look at that, actually turn our curvature graph on for all these. You can see we've got internal discontinuities in these surfaces. That's because the degree three surface, degree minus one, which is gives you two, that means the internal continuity maxes out at, at uh, G2. So if that was a degree four surface, that means it would max out at G3 internal continuity multi-span surface. So so even though we're put, making the, trying to make these curves all nice and everything, it does get reduced down by the boundary surface. So there you've got a discontinuity. I mean, it's, it's still G2, um, G2, but if we look at the other end here, and I'll just shrink that. So you can see there, this end's come in pretty much as per the, the control sketches, okay. So that's the difference if we're extruding something, it respects the input degree of the uh, spline, but when it gets to boundary surfaces, it pretty much boils it all down to a degree three multi-span surface. Right, so that's done. Now the top pillow. Top pillow is built the same way as in the previous video. It's got a big relief here, and then the sides are extruded out. They're an extrude, and there again, the G3 connection between here and here, so between the sort of rolling off corner and the planar top face. Okay, and then those get trimmed back. Again, very similar to the first video. So this is where I started having to add some extra details on. So this midsection sketch was in the in the first video. Uh, it's built the same way, it's a degree 7 style spline. I've had to add this uh, center section sketch in because as the surface transitions out here, we do have this arc form in the middle. Um, so I was finding I was getting a bit of flattening in the surface without having to add some extra controls in. So I've had to add in two extra sections. So I've got a centre section, and that centre section passes through the midsection with a pierce point relationship. And then I've also got another section right out on the end, which I've called the pin pinch section, which is a single span uh, degree 7 style spline again and that has a pierce point relationship with the center section and that is to control what happens out on the end here because if we sort of look along look along here you can sort of see this this corner on the outside in relationship to this spline sort of flattens off it's got a, a flat spot on the in the middle so it's just about being able to control the surface and then there's the boundary surface. So if I go into the boundary surface and we'll turn zebras off and mesh preview on. So you can see it's got four sections in the first direction. So one, two, three, and then four, which is the outside corner. And then three sections in the second direction. So it's a bit more sort of probably overdefined compared to the, the model in the first video, but it kind of needs to be so I can so I can control what's going on through here as the surface transitions out towards the outside of the, the corner. And you can see there, it is sort of starting to transition into that sort of, um, having more of that consistent curvature out towards the arc section. And then back in here, it sort of dissipates Okay, so that whole process was repeated at the back. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you that. And I've linked dimensions, uh, so so all the sections pretty much repeat themselves over here. Okay, for the bottom pillow, this was set up in the similar way again with a separate edge with like a discontinuity uh, between what I've called these ribbon surfaces. 
So that's where the bottom case and the main case, or the bottom cover and the main case sort of split. There's a there's a part line or a split line along here. The surfaces actually have a crease. If you look really closely at the product, there's a crease between the corner surface and the and this little ribbon on the outside. Uh, so I've built that the same way and all I've added here was a center line. I didn't add a pinch uh, sketch. So this bottom corner versus the first video, I've just got one extra sketch which is the center line that runs down um, with a pierce point relationship through the middle section. Okay, and then that's all nutted together. So I'm going to drop that form over into Rhino quickly with my macro and we'll have a quick look with the zebras and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is the underside. So you can see there the, the surface comes around and that's where the crease, the crease starts here and then runs around the corner and then it's um, tangent again through here and the same on the front corner on the underside. Yes, so I was a little bit worried about having the three pieces and then how that would translate uh, especially at a such a flat angle to this pinched um, top surface with the pillow. I thought it might cause me some issues but it seems to have worked all right because I think we've gone for like a G3 um, transition on each side of the arc. And if we have a quick look at curvatures so they're pretty dense surfaces so these are all degree three everything you can see here with lots of iso palms iso curves they're um degree th degree three surfaces so if i extracted one of those out and we look at that and turn on the curvature graph for that and just in one direction and increase the scale you can see the internal discontinuities I was talking about because it's a degree through surface so these are all discontinuities it's still G2 internal curvature but um, that's what happens with SolidWorks reducing everything down to a, a multi-span degree through surface and then if we turn on our curvature analysis just ignore these edges here you can sort of see these striations which again I think that's down to the the degree three multi-span surface okay yeah so not too bad a result i did wonder about over defining and having to put those extra sections in but it seemed to work okay so i think it was fairly successful the form is now much uh the corner i feel is closer to the <laughs> the actual apple corner rather than my um my sort of pointy corner i had in my first video sort of looks uh more intentional so yeah, I think it, it definitely looks better than the uh, what I did in the first video. The corner looks much more controlled, less, less pointy. So I'll put this file in the description. Anybody wants to download it, pick it apart. Some things down further down the tree might fall over, like these um, locations of these fasteners, etc. But if you just want to have a look at the main form, it's all good for that. I might be back with a part three and add the keyboard, but we'll we'll see how how we go for time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.